I wanted to share this uh, interesting case with you that uh, Antonina Kalmakova showed me from uh, CSD Healthcare. And it's a, a nodule on the scalp of a 51 year old female. Now, to my knowledge, um, there was no evidence to suggest that this was a metastasis and uh, it was regarded as being a primary cutaneous lesion which i think which i think is fair enough but i would i would agree that um when one's faced with a a nodule in the scalp like this one one would always want to make sure that one wasn't miss, missing a metastatic tumor now, um, I'll just switch these annotations off for the moment because they just um, confu confuse the issue f for at, at first glance. So we can see there are two pieces, there are two cuts of the tumour, um, and the tumour is presenting as a, as a cystic nodule with a, a zone of compressed dermal connective tissue around it, giving rise to a, a pseudocapsule. And uh, we'll just, I just have to straighten this up, and we'll have a look and see what uh, the tumor looks like at higher magnification. So um, what we can see, as I mentioned, there's a pseudocapsule, there's a very circumscribed border to the lesion, and then the the uh, the tumor shows multiple foci. There's one there. There's another one there. And there's a bit more there. It shows multiple foci of necrosis, and it's composed of these papillary processes with a very thick epithelial. Uh, mul mul multi layer lining or covering, I suppose, would be more appropriate. And we'll look at that at higher magnification. And um, there is one of our areas of necrosis there. And at this magnification, one can actually pick up that there's some glandular differentiation with that mucin secretion there's a nice field there which will look up at, look, look at higher magnification now i don't have any special stains so i i can't prove to you that this is epithelial mucin rather than stromal mucin but i think if we were able to do a a PAS and Alcyon blue, this would be PAS positive, Alcyon blue negative, confirming epithelial mucin. And there we can see tumor necrosis. And the, um, the epithelial cells, they show nuclear pleomorphism, not to a huge degree, but sufficient, I think, to raise one's concerns. There's more mucin there. This is a field here that's quite interesting because it looks as if there's mucin outside the tumor. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's genuine or not, but that field on its own might have suggested, gosh, are we looking at a, a, at a, a basal cell carcinoma with adenoid change? And that's certainly in the, in the differential di diagnosis. Let's go to, um, I just need to go to a slightly lower power and see what else. I think one of the things that's striking about this tumor when you scan around it, just in the context of adenoid BCC, is there really isn't much in the way of peripheral palisading, um, which I would like to have seen uh, had this been a, a basal cell carcinoma. You see, there's the there's the edge of the tumor, and there just isn't any palisading. So I think that uh, mucin, mucinous feature we saw earlier is probably a bit of a red herring. Now um, we'll continue looking at this at uh, high power just for a, a little bit longer. 
just just to give you an idea of the morphology of the cells unfortunately it's rather a thick section and uh, it makes focusing slightly difficult but i think you can make out the nuclei pretty large they're um, somewhat vesicular and um, the tumor shows quite a few mitoses but needless to say when you're trying to demonstrate it without um, any arrows it's always a bit of a it's always a bit of a problem that that that's probably a mitosis that might be a mitosis there they certainly weren't difficult to uh, to uh, find that may be a, a rather scrunched up mitotic figure there so um and there's more glandular differentiation there's a nice almost like a cuticle uh, and the same thing there and there and there again so um let's um let's just go back to low power because i wanted to show you something else at low power now it uh, this time we'll keep the uh annotations on and um i want to look at the the uh, smaller fragment first because it's very pretty um and we look here by the way i one thing i forgot to mention is it's clearly dermal there's no evidence of an epidermal origin nor does it appear to be arising from a follicle and that's probably of some importance again perhaps when you're thinking of bcc you might have looked for an epidermal component but uh, there isn't one i just uh, circled these actually earlier on before i picked up all the glandular differentiation elsewhere but that's a nice field showing a, a gland full of mucin and there's a mitotic figure and there's a not well it's actually the, the glands are all over the place so um one doesn't need to spend too much time on that um, and there's perhaps another mitotic figure and if we go back to times two um, no I'd have to go back to, to the start again I don't think uh, it really matters very much let us just say that mitotic figures were not difficult to find what was particularly interesting it was the um, immunohistochemistry and this is this is key 67 and even at this magnification you can see there's an awful lot of positivity and when i enlarge it just to times two you can see that there are nuclei are positive all over the place and if we just go slightly higher par, there's times five magnification and it's almost breathtakingly positive so key 67 was um the tumor is just alive with it and lastly i wanted to show you um p53 it's not something that i routinely ever did um but uh sometimes p53 can be overexpressed in hydradenocarcinoma and uh, that being the case this one certainly is but I, I personally have never seen anything quite like this before. Um, it's very, very striking. So if we add up all, all of these features, we have a, a circumscribed nodule with a pseudocapsule in the dermis of what I think is probably the scalp. It's composed of uh, papillary processes uh, showing foci of necrosis, and very convincing epithelial derivate or glandular differentiation sorry uh, there's no origin from the epidermis and there's nothing to really suggest peripheral palisading so a, a very odd bcc although i think is a reasonable thought i don't think that really comes into the differential diagnosis and I think on the basis of the morphology that I would regard this tumor as uh, a, a, as a hydradenocarcinoma, most likely of eccrine derivation, since we didn't see any anything to, to suggest 
uh, apocrine change. So I hope that's been of interest to you. It's just a quick little case, but I thought it was really very, very nice. So thank you very much, and I, I hope you, I hope you've, you've uh, in, enjoyed the presentation.